In this video, we want to prove this equation. This is another uh, fundamental property of the Dirac delta function. Now, in the previous videos dealing with the Dirac delta function, we derived this equation. This just equals f of a. We established that several uh, videos ago. Um, incidentally, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Now, suppose that instead of this integral, we just had f of a that too equals f of a so these integrals are equal to each other this integral equals this integral does that mean then that what is inside of the integrals have to be equal to each other. If that was true, then that would imply, does this imply the fact that these two integrals are equal to each other, does that imply that what is inside the integrals must be equal to each other? Does that imply that And no, unfortunately, it's not that simple. That does not imply that. So just because this integral is equal to this integral does not mean that the integrand, what is inside the integral sign, is going to be the same. For example, suppose we have, um, say, this integral, real simple, x squared dx, uh, going, say, from 0 to 1, that equals 1 third x cubed going from 0 to 1, that equals 1 third. Now, if we have this integral, say of 1 third the cosine of theta d theta, that would equal one third the sine of theta going from zero to pi over two. The sine of that is one, that equals one third. But obviously what's inside of the integrals is not the same. So just because this integral equals this integral, that doesn't mean that what's inside of the integrals have to be equal to each other. So we have to back up a ways and rethink this. And the approach is this. Suppose we have an integral, real simple to say 0 to 1, and we have some function f of x times x squared dx, and this equals integral 0 to 1 f of x times some other function g of x dx. And what we find is that no matter what function we put here for f of x, put it on both sides, and do the integration, it comes out to be the same. Now, put a different function for f of x. Say f of x 2. Over here, f of x 2. And it, once again, it gives the same answers. The integrals are always equal. Now we put in a different function for f of x. Say f of x 3. Over here, 
f of x, 3. And once again, the integrals come out to be equal to each other. So is, if this is true every time, or in other words, we could say, if this is true with any arbitrary function here, f of x, then that means, yes, that the rest of what's inside the integral, the rest of the integrand, has to be equal to each other. So this would imply, then, that g of x must equal x squared. And again, the test is, this is called the equivalence principle, is that if these two integrals are always equal to each other, regardless of what function we use for f of x, they always come out to be the same, then this and this must be equal. So let's go back and rethink our problem using the equivalence principle. So, let's use this approach, say we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, and we have g of t f of t, the direct delta function of t minus a dt. And that will equal g of a f of a, just as we did in the previous videos here in our series. This is always 0, except when t equals a. Now, here then, this equals f of a. Now, g of a, we can rewrite that um, like this. The integral from minus infinity to plus infinity g of t delta t minus a dt. This is always 0, except when t equals a, so this whole expression is just g of a. So what is written here is the same as what is right here. So we have this. Now we can take, if we want to, we can take this inside, this is just a constant, we're evaluating not f of t with the variable, but f of a, where a is a specific number. So this is just a constant. So if we want to, we can put it inside of the integral. And let's see what our final equation is then. We started with this. So we will have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, g of t, f of t, the direct delta function, d of t, and that will equal this integral. And this is a constant, so we're going to put the constant inside of the integral. We have g of t. Then f of a moving the constant inside the integral. Then we have the rest of the integral, the direct delta function. dt. Let's put things in better focus. OK. Now, this is true regardless of what function g of t we put into here. So here comes the equivalence principle then. 
This is always true regardless of what we use for G of T. We just derive this in a general way. We didn't use any specific function of G and T. It's just a general expression for any function of T. So that means then that if this, these integrals are always equal to each other, regardless of what we use as for our function for G of T, if we have G of T1, they're always equal to each other. If we have a different one, G of T2, they're always equal to each other. If we use a different one, G of T3, they're always equal to each other. So, again, for any arbitrary G of T we use here, they're always equal to each other. Then, that implies that this and this are equal to each other. So we have f of t times the direct delta function of t minus a equals f of a, the direct delta function of t minus a. And that is what we set out to prove. So again, and we could do that um, pretty straightforward once we realize the equivalence principle. And that is, again, it's telling us that we have two integrals that are always equal to each other, regardless of what we put in here for g of t. Any function we want to put in here, they're still always equal to each other, then that implies that this and this are, in fact, equal to each other. So that's it for um, this video. We'll try to look now at some more specific examples of how the direct delta function can be used to solve different types of differential equations, those will be coming up in the future videos.